This is the Hosea Him Archer with a grim fairy tale to read. Don't be too scared as you listen in. It's only a fairy tale. Nothing is real. There was once a t- upon a time a poor man who could no longer support his son. Then said the son, Dear father, things go badly with us. I am burdened to you. I will rather go away and see how I, I can earn my bread. So the father gave him his blessing, and with great sorrow took time to took leave of him. At this time the king of a mighty empire was at war. A youth took service of him, and with him went out to fight. When he came before the enemy, there was a battle and great danger. It rained and shot until his comrades fell on all sides. When the leader was killed, those left were about to take flight, but the youth stepped forth, spoke broadly, then cried, We will not let our fatherland be ruined. Then the others followed him. He pressed on and conquered the enemy. When the king heard that he had the victory to him alone, he raised him above all the others, gave him great treasures, and made him the first of the kingdom. The king had a daughter who was very, very who was very beautiful, but she was also very strange. She had made a vow to take no one as her lord and husband, who did not promise to let himself be buried alive with her if she died first. He loves me with all his heart, she said. A watch will life be of him afterwards. On her side, she would do the same, and if he died first, would, would, go, would go down to the grave with him. The strange had and up to this time frightened away all wooers, but the youth became so charmed with her beauty he cared for nothing but asked her father to uh, but asked her father for her. But dost thou know that what thou must promise? said the king. I must be buried with her, he replied. If I let live her but my love is so great I do not mind the danger. Then the king consented, and when it was so Summarized and with great splendor, they lived for now, all happy and contented with each other. Then it befell that the young queen was attacked by a severe illness. No physician could save her. As she lay there dead, the the young king remembered what he had been obliged to promise and was horrified at having to lie down alive at the grave, not but. There was no escape. The king had placed sentries at all the gates. He was not possible to avoid his fate. When the day came, the corpses were to be buried. He was taken down into the royal vault with it, and then the door was shut and bolted. Near the coffin stood a table, on which were four candles, four loaves of bread, and four bottles of wine. When, when the, this provision was at, came to an end, he would have to die of hunger. No, he. And now he sat there, full of pain and grief, as every day a little piece of bread, drank only a mouthful of wine, and never saw, never saw death daily drawing nearer. Whilst he was thus gazed upon him, he saw a snake creep out of the corner of his vault and approach the dead body. And he thought it came to gnaw at it. He drew his sword and said, As long as I live, I shall not touch her. her and he he the snake in three pieces. After a time, a second snake crept out of the hole. When it, came, it, when it saw the other living dead and cut in pieces, it went back. The sooner came back again with three green leaves in its mouth. When it took a piece, three pieces of the snake, laid them together as they ought to be, go, and placed one of the leaves on each wound. Immediately several parts joined themselves together and the snake moved and came alive again. Both of them hastened away together. The leaves were left lying on the ground and a desire came in the mind of the unhappy man. He had been watching this to know that the wondrous powers of leaves which had been brought the snake to life again would not, not like to be service of a human being. So he picked up the leaves and laid one of them on the mouth of his dead wife and two others on the eyes. 
I hardly had d- done this when blood stirred in her veins, foams into her pearl face and covered, covered it again. When she, when, then she drew breath, opened her eyes and said, Oh God, where am I? Thou art with me, dear wife, he answered. I told her how everything had happened and how he brought her back to life. Then he came, then he gave her some white bread and when she had great strength, he raised her up and went to the door and knocked and called so loudly that sentries heard it and told the king. The king came down, opened the door, and there he found strong and well and rejoiced with them now that such sorrow was over. The young king, however, took the three snake leaves from him, gave them to the servant, and said, Keep them for me carefully and carry them constantly about the who knows in what trouble they might yet be of service for us. A change had happened, had, however, taken place to his wife after she was restored to life. It seemed that all her love for her husband had gone out of heart. At the same time, when he wanted, when he wanted to make, to make a voyage over the sea to visit his father, he had gone on board the ship. She had forgotten the great love and fidelity he had shown her, and which means a rescuing of her death and could see the wicked in, Incarnation for the skipper. Once the young king lay there asleep, she, she called her in a skipper. See the sleep of her head, and the skipper took him by the feet, and thus they threw him down into the sea. When the shameful deed was done, she said, Now let us return home, and, uh, and say that he died away. I stole and praised thee so much, so my father, that he will marry me to thee and make me the heir to his crown. But the faithful surgeon had seen all that did. But the same servant who had seen all they did, unseen with him, unfastened a little boat for the ship, got into it, showed the way his master, and let the traitors go their way. He fished up the dead body up to hell, and by the help of the three snake leaves she carried about him, laid on his eyes and his mouth, and fortunately found that brought the young king back to life. They both rose with all their strength, day and night, and their little little boat flew so swiftly they reached the old king before the others did. He was astonished when he saw them come around alone, and asked what what happened. When he had opened the witness of his daughter, he said, I cannot believe she behaved so ill, but truth will come to light. They both go into a secret room and keep themselves hidden from everyone. Soon afterwards, the great ship came sailing in, and a godless woman befo- appeared before her father with a troubled countenance. He said, Why does thou come back alone? Where is thy husband? I, father, dear father, she replied, I come home indeed again. I come home again in good grief. During the voyage, my husband became suddenly ill and died. If the good skipper had not helped me, not giving this help, I would have gone ill with me. He was present at his death, and can tell you, the king said, I will make the dead come alive again, and opened the chamber, and bade the two came out. When the woman saw her husband, she was thunderstruck, and fell on her knees, fell on her knees, begged him for mercy. The king said, there is no mercy. He was ready to die for thee, and restore thee to life again, but he left you has murdered him in his sleep, and thou shalt see the wall that thou deservest. Then she is replaced by a compass and ship, where they were, in which had been pierced with holes and sent to sea, where they soon sank amid the waves. I say that was a story by the Brothers Grimm. Jacob and William, first, first published in 20th of December 1812. Jacob and William Wilhelm Grimm were both, were two of nine children from other, from their mother, Dorothea, and father, Philip. Philip was a highly regarded district magistrate in Steinyard near Constable. Jacob and Wilhelm were sent to school for a classical education where it, well, once they were aged while their father was working. 
They were very hard welcome pupils throughout their education. And now they followed their fo- father's footsteps and started to pursue a degree in law. However, in 1796, their father died at the age of 44 from from it, for, for no, pneumonia. This was the first, this was a tragic time for the Grimms because the home lost their financial support and relied, and relied on their aunt, helped her and Zempa and godfather, grandfather, Joa, 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 Jonathan, Herman Zimmer. At the age of 11, Jacob was compelled to be head of the household and provide his family. After downsizing the home, because of financial reasons, Hene sent Jacob and William to study at the British Fredish High School, Lithium in Kelsa. In the school, the grandfather wrote to them saying that because of the current situation, they need to play a industry to secure their future well. Shortly after attending Limson, their beloved grandfather died and they were again left, as, left to themselves to support their family in the future. Two became held out of becoming the best agents at Lithium before since they wanted to live up to his deceased father. They studied more than twelve hours a day and established similar work habits. They also shared the same bed at school room at school. After four years of rigorous schooling, Jacob graduated head of his class in eighteen oh two. Willingham con- contracted asthma and scarlet fever which t- the ladies graduated by one year, although he was head of his class. Both were given special dispensations for studying law at the University of Mobile. They particularly needed this dispensation because the local standing at the time was not high enough to have normal admittance. The University of Hamburg was a small 200 person university where most students were. were were more interested in activities than schooling. Most of the students received spendings, even though they were riches in the land. Grimms did not receive any spendings because of the social standing. However, they didn't. They were not upset by this. It says they kept the distractions away. Jacob attended the years first and showed proof his hard work ethic and quick intelligence. Why William joined Jacob at the university? Jacob. Contained a reputation about him due to the intention of Frederick von Segret. Frederick von Segret was, was found at the historical school of law, carrying huge personality and personal, professional influence to the brothers. Throughout their time at the university, the brothers came quite close to Stig, Stig von Segret, were able to Use his personal library, where he became very interested in German law, history, and folklore. Secret asked Jacob to join him in Paris as an assistant. Jacob went with him for a year. While he was gone, William became very interested in German literature and started collecting books. Once Jacob returned to Kessel, he decided to quit his own law and instead spent his full efforts on German literature. While Jacob studied literature and took care of his, their siblings. William received a degree in law in Mogwab. In, in 1808 their mother died and it was very hard for Jacob to come because he took the position of his family as a father figure while also trying to be a brother. From 1806 to 1810 the family had barely enough money to properly feed and clothe themselves. During this time Jacob and William were concerned about the stability of the family and began collecting folk tales. Edgar von Eckermann and Clement were all good friends of the brothers and wanted to publish folk tales, so they asked the brothers to collect all tales for publication. The Grimms collected many old books and asked friends and acquaintances to tell tales and gather stories from others. Jacob and William sought to collect these stories in order to write a history of old Posse, Posse yeah, of German folklore to preserve history. The first one in this volume of this edition was published in 1812, containing 86 stories and became more and more popular throughout the years. And there's quite a few Brother Grimm stories, which I'm a great fan of, and they've all been made into various films. So look out for Brothers Grimm.
Okay, fair enough. 